scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. In Jesus' name, please sit down. Let me tell you something. Please listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. I will not go ahead of myself. There is a separate series on deliverance. That one will announce it and I will settle down and teach you. But can I tell you this? I don't mean to scare you. But Africa, listen to me. If you are a firstborn, listen to me. If you are a first male, listen to me. If you are a last child, listen to me. If you are a breadwinner, listen to me. If you are the one who lifts up the head of your family, listen to me. Satan, he attacks, but there is a protocol to the attack. So much ignorance in the body of Christ. listen please look up look up i want you to pay attention don't you think i'm wasting your time if you are the first to be educated the first for your head to be lifted in your family the first go and read the bible about the laws firstborns not just the first to come out of the womb the first to do anything in life do you know why because the first of anything is the seed and the pattern The first to open a door for a family is the first to create the pattern. The first to break out of poverty. You think the devil will fold his arms and watch you? The first man of God from your village. The first man of God from your family. The first professor. The first married man. The first married woman. Praise God. Please sit down. Let me try to organize myself this night. Parashataba. Just help those under the anointing. I tell you, God is doing many things as I'm speaking. You came to church. This is koinonia. No waste of your time at all. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Let me tell you one of the ways that Satan moves is called the power of patterns. You know what patterns are? Patterns are repetitive occurrences. You find out, God forbid, don't feel bad. Your grandmother was raped. Your mother was raped. Your daughter was raped. They never shared it with themselves. Yet the pattern will find itself again. 
somebody spent 10 years in america returned back to nigeria like an arm robber another person spent 10 years in us or in in in, in, in um, london returned back all those things are patterns let me tell you what patterns are patterns are sponsored by altars even if the initiators of the altars go the altars are still valid they will speak that is the reason why you see nations go through patterns regions go through patterns individuals go through patterns families go through patterns even ministries go through patterns The anointing is not for preachers not the end time anointing the anointing is not just for men of god the anointing is not just for adults help that person please i have seen wickedness in the lives of people i have seen satan destabilize the joy and the peace of families I've seen great men of God with potentials to do things for the kingdom but Satan just brought them down I've seen business people who would have been the crown of their regions can I tell you the truth believe me when I tell you Satan is not a friend learn from his rebellion and his unbendedness Satan has never told God sorry he will never tell man sorry just believe that about him so when satan comes around your life and acts like a friend beware of what you are playing with you are not just playing with fire satan is every other thing but he's not stupid and he's not foolish he has an advantage of age and he's using it well please sit down why do we need the anointing to empower the believer to subdue the forces of darkness fighting against our destinies and fighting against the advancement of the kingdom mm. number two why do we need the anointing the second reason why we need the anointing is so that we can tap into the dimension of supernatural possibilities why do we need the anointing to empower us to tap into the dimension of supernatural possibilities results and possibilities that are beyond the realm and the scope of humans in ministry in business in politics you think daniel became an extraordinary politician in a harsh climate just because he could speak good english no even the people consulted through divination and they found out that the spirit of god they called it the gods was upon him they knew that this man was not ordinary and through the dispensation of three or four kings he still remained on top why do we need the anointing to empower us to manifest dimensions of supernatural possibilities mm. i made up my mind as a person and as a man of god that i will never be ordinary that my life and everything about it will be extraordinary always not just because i want a name for myself not at all because i have found out that when you follow the natural course of things time will cheat you men will cheat you systems will cheat you you need to have an advantage that is beyond the natural course are we together it's good to follow the laws of prosperity i have taught you but following only the natural laws of prosperity save journey you will see when god will bless you or you will see when you'll be empowered in this wicked and evil world when you are one lord to break through an evil man will reverse you back to start again more than compliance with the laws they are there and they are important i've taught you but there has to be an engracing that can pick you on the wings of the spirit remember that the unit of destiny is time that's why god brought possibilities like speed 
like restoration these are forces that insist and ensure that you live a victorious life are we learning now in acts chapter 7 and verse 22 let's look at two scriptures very quickly acts chapter 7 and verse 22 media please help us the bible says and moses was learned in all the wisdom of the egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds look at such a man do you know what that meant even though he was not an egyptian he did not have the history there was a supernatural engracing upon him he learned the wisdom of the egyptians he was mighty both in words and in deed they were preparing Moses already. The level of excellence from his life, he was inevitably going to be the next Pharaoh. That's why when he returned, you see, as at the time Moses returned back to Egypt, the Pharaoh he left had died. It was his son, Ramesses, who was his friend. That was why when Moses looked at him and said, Pharaoh, I'm sure Ramesses would look at him and say, Dear brother, Good to see you after over 40 years. The only difference is that you have returned back stupid. You were wiser when you left. You've forgotten that this is Egypt. You come and stand looking like a fugitive with a staff and tell me some deity you met in the forest said I should come and release these people who have been in captivity for 430 years. Moses, you have the wisdom of the Egyptians. And he said, all right, I'm not here for a long story let the rods i told you that they are also preachers i finished my preaching let the rod start his own sermon and when he threw the rod it became a serpent i can imagine pharaoh laughing and saying you still remember and he called janus and jembes the wizards of egypt and they came and made caricature of the rod of moses they threw pharaoh's rod it also became a serpent and god use that most of you have not discerned the sermon of the rods those rods preach the message that you need to understand you have heard the sermon of men but understand the sermon of the rods do you know what happened the rod that became a serpent ate that of the man and did not increase in size and he picked it up that is a sermon dominion over time and matter is real dominion God was saying something there. Oh, but I'm not impressed enough. And then one plague after another. You can see that Pharaoh was not a normal human being. You can see the Luciferian manifestation. This is why some of you need to pray for your children. You flog them, they come back and see misbehave. They come out of jail. They come out of the prison cell. Will you do it again? No. Two days, they are back again. It's not normal. That determination is not a human determination. It came from, it's an antichrist spirit empowering people like that. There are people when they are going back to prison, they don't even ask them any questions. They just say, just pass, go back. Just go register your name, change your clothes and go in there. <laughs> Can I tell you this? creation is awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God the sons of God are not here to repeat science science is an advantage but believe me God didn't take us this far to just come and be scientific I, I, I guarantee you it doesn't take fasting to be scientific it doesn't take Bible study to be scientific what we are manifesting is higher than science he did not just bring us to, to just do sociology or to do all of no 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 there will be a spectacular display before Jesus Christ comes the manifestation of a godlike dimension of power and grace in and through the saints it has been written so that it will not be changed the Bible we will begin to see people manifest dimensions of intelligence I do I say this I like to study a lot about the world and all of that I like to study about UFOs aliens for some reason I find those things interesting since I don't watch movies and all of that 
I now focus on those things and I read some of the ancient science that you know they tell us we are not alone you know there are all kinds of people around the world these ones these species of people and then I just read up all those things and in my mind I said no wonder human beings behave the way they behave there is a minimal level of wickedness that a normal human being should have when your wickedness stretches beyond that border it's not you again it's you and another spirit is that true no matter how wicked men are there is a limit when your wickedness stretches beyond a certain threshold you are empowered by a spirit the same way human beings cannot love and be kind beyond a certain threshold when you move past that threshold you are not alone too there has to be a spirit empowering you we need to be supernatural people you see our world today and i don't mean to cause trouble across the body of christ but we have to be careful there is a gradual exaltation of philosophies and science above the supernatural why because a lot of people just believe that societies and territories have been changed through their reception of science we're not against that but let me tell you sincerely this faith work that we are part of it came by a supernatural means it is sustained by a supernatural means find out how we are going to leave the earth it's not scientific what is the skyscraper that will take us to heaven with one last that blast of a trumpet those who are dead in Christ will rise explain the name of the scientific process that gives them new bodies immediately what is it called explain the name of the scientific process that suddenly withdraws gravity and we who are alive and shouting the name of Jesus will be on our way going and those who are laughing at us will wave them and say I told you I gave you a chance explain the name of that scientific process am I against science not at all but let us be careful because the flesh realm including science is Satan's domain he does not want you to rise or see reality beyond the three-dimensional plane because provided you are under the influence of the three-dimensional realm you are in Satan's domain he can manipulate systems and structures he can play around with your mind and destroy your destiny but when you rise to that realm and that plane your life becomes extraordinary we have so many doctors in this ministry there are many professionals it is not unusual that if someone is sick the natural cause is to administer a treatment and that is wonderful but what if the doctor is not there and that person may not have the chance to see the doctor is there a possibility of administering something powerful who taught the doctor that you can stand before a tree and pick a leaf and process it in a lab and it becomes an injection and you put it in someone even the doctors depend on the supernatural for treatment the injection does not get to your heart when they put that injection wherever it enters your body they leave the rest do you not know that every other thing that happens is a miracle I read a bit about the human body and I'm surprised at the many activities that happen in the human body do you know when a human being is sleeping science tells us and medicine tells us do you know how many activities in your body shut down just because you are sleeping that means if as you are awake looking at me now you may think it's just your heart and maybe your brain that is working think again if you know the, the it's almost like a riot in your body all the things the cells working if you don't understand they repeat it again this body is as busy as anything and yet there is an invisible hand that keeps it every time I'm in the air I think about a lot of things if I'm not sleeping and one of the things I think about is the miracle of a material body that was created from metals runs and then lifts and now 
we are above the clouds and we are under the mercy of the creator I'm not, I'm not talking about the dexterity of the plane moving i'm saying literally for 50 minutes or five hours or whatever hours you are under the mercy of the creator do you know that if that plane goes down there is no amount of you, you can see the limitation flying helps me to know where science ends the moment they lift science says i've tried whatever you believe let it continue with you when you are coming down come down to my realm i will pick it up from where i'm limited and land you safely and a plane is moving and i'm sure that god watches in heaven and he's just saying oh dear these people do not even know who is flying them it's not like they met him to verify whether he's drunk whether he's all right whether he fought with his wife, whether he's under a psychological problem, you just know that the owner of the plane gave the man the, the, the access and you now had your confidence to sit down there. Why wouldn't I trust God? Listen, I travel a lot and if I can place my destiny in the hands of an airline, God bless them. A number of them are my people. I, God bless you. I'm not, I'm not speaking against them. Literally. When we are flying in the night, I don't know where we are. I don't know where. We, we believe everything they tell us. And yet these are human beings that can make mistakes. Nobody ever says, verify that we are, we are you know. How are you sure we are safe? And yet the creator of the ends of the earth, when he now beckons that we trust him, we bring all kinds of flimsy reasons and say, God, before I take this step, prove to me. Yet we jump into the plane and sit down quietly. I'm using flight because almost everybody here or many of us here are maybe frequent flyers in some way. Just see what you do every day and every time. What of the driver that drives you? You've been hearing that they are kidnapping, yet you are still going to travel tomorrow. You would think that will make you afraid. You will still go and come back. The longest sea journey I've had was one hour, 20 minutes or so. I made up my mind that I won't repeat that again. 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 Not from the Riverine area. I've made my contribution. As far as my experience is concerned my goodness let me tell you when you are and, and these are military people carrying me they are not amateurs just said lord well for me to live is christ and to die is gain if i die the only thing is that i didn't finish my assignment but at least are we blessed we need to tap into supernatural dimensions of the power of God. Everything that is natural has a supernatural expression. I repeat, everything that is natural has a supernatural expression. When you go to the market and you meet a trader, you say, I want to buy a wrapper. They will ask you original or um, what's the other, or original or maybe imitation depending on whatever money you have. There is one that looks like it, but it's not it. There is one that is really it. Everything that is natural is like that imitation. There is an original. The Bible says everything that appears, Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1 and 3, that it came from a realm that is unseen. Hear me. There is a natural cause of prosperity, but there is supernatural prosperity. There is a natural medical cause of healing, but there is supernatural healing. There is a natural cause for growth, but there is supernatural growth. The choice is yours. They both have their consequences. If you choose to live a natural life, there are many, many, many things that you will be limited. You will not be able to do many things. But you can choose to command the supernatural even in your life. Are we blessed? So the supernatural grants you empowerment 
to subdue the forces fighting against your destiny and against kingdom advance and then it empowers you to rise to a dimension where you command supernatural possibilities Luke chapter 1 from verse 30 to 6 Luke chapter 1 very quickly please Luke chapter 1 from verse 30 to 36 need to run through a few things very quickly so we'll pray Luke chapter 1 from verse 30 now this is Mary and the angel said unto her Mary now fear not Mary for thou hast found favor with God and behold thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus we're reading to 36 he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end now Mary said to the angel how shall these things be seeing I know not a man you know what Mary is saying Mary is saying listen I it would have been believable if there is a process a natural cause of how things should be from a biological angle but there is a deficiency here how will it happen because I didn't hear you mention a man it is possible that God will speak to you and the natural formula for that result he will not mention it don't forget that it is God who is speaking are we together yes the natural cause was to wait for the angel to steer the water and whoever jumps in first but when Jesus came Jesus would have said I empower you with wisdom and the prophetic to know when an angel is going to come so that you will jump before the rest Jesus said listen I don't negate the rule but I can change it because I am God ah. if you prosper in one year naturally chances are excellent that you may be a thief or a fraudster you know all these kinds of things because you should be able to build with dignity and honor are we are we are we together now but God can come to you and say because of the cry of your mother and the burden of 10 of your siblings allowing you to go through the natural course of life investing slowly gradually receiving 10 percent every year until you are 10 years by the time that will happen your your parents would have gone and you may not have the opportunity for that prophetic word i gave them so there is something i'm going to do in your life that in one year now when it happens you will not go around telling people don't follow the natural course of growth that would be erroneous but you will know that your life was an exemption are we together and the hand of the lord came upon elijah when you want to go from one place to the other if you have a boat or a camel or a donkey you use it but in this case the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and another rule was created to him do you know why I'm telling you this keep learning the laws of the kingdom keep learning the laws of life but don't be surprised when an invisible hand picks you and moves you beyond the natural sequence of things I believe this I believe in diligence I will always teach diligence are we together but like I would always share there are times that your boat is fine there are times your fishing net is fine oh Peter there are times you are in the sea but you will still not catch fish that is not an issue of laziness the fish didn't come it's no longer your fault at that point you don't need skills again you need the one who created the fish to gravitate them towards you and say cast your net to its right side and in a moment you will catch fish that your boat will begin to sink hallelujah it is natural for you to start a business and then look for customers build a clientele gradually through integrity trustworthiness and after five years you would have gained experience made your mistakes failed cried prayed on God sown seeds and then you stabilize but God can decide in one year somebody can call you and mentor you and say you will be the African distributor of this product just like that 
and you are putting your hand on your head is it not in your bible that when the lord turned again the captivity of zion he said we were like them that dream what kind of miracle will make unbelievers join in the testimony hear me believers let us maintain the natural course of things based on the laws of life i am not teaching you to ignore the laws of life but woe betides anybody who laughs at the possibility of a dimension higher than science higher than sociology this is my problem with intelligent people and secular humanists they negate the fact that there is a god in heaven and there is a possibility to tap into that infinite power go to the village and they will tell you there is a natural cause there is a way you can plant crops and everything will grow but there is a way you can have an accelerated harvest do you want it when you say yes they will not say go and stand in the farm they will say go and meet a man there is something he will give you there is the natural cause of politics you can vote you can campaign you can talk to people they can help you you can grow you can build but there is, we have seen it in this nation where god picked people you know this one it was god that lifted them hallelujah i heard of somebody true story who bought a property it was worth some millions of naira this guy brought a, pro a property it was not up to two weeks there was a company that wanted that property but they were going through a protocol to meet the owner and quickly some money came for that guy and he bought that property from the former owner and they suddenly called him that there is a company that want to buy it. It was almost 10 times the amount. This boy stood in shock. They were desperate for that land. The owner that sold it to him wanted to make trouble and say return. He said, no, 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 we finished our transaction. This is between me and these people. I, I mean it, I'm not exact. If I'm joking, I'll tell you I'm joking. That was how this guy's life changed overnight. Many people suspected him of fraud. He said, I'm not, I'm not a fraudster. It was just the favor of God now the balance in church is that because of teachings like this many believers become irresponsible you see that they negate the natural course of things and they say since there is favor since there is speed why should I be diligent why should I build on relationships I'm not teaching you to ignore these laws but I'm teaching you that in addition let it be at the back of your mind you can produce posters as a man of God. You can produce handbills, billboards. You can invite people, do evangelism. But you know like I know that there is a limit. You can do the best that you can do. And someone can just frown and say, pastors who eat people's money, wicked people. That's the comment they will give. But there is a grace that can come upon you and can compel all and sundry to come and see what Jesus is doing this one is not charm this one is not um, whatever it is it is the hand of God find out what was on Jesus that made 5,000 people to climb a mountain with him and stay there must I climb a mountain to hear him is someone learning now please let me have your attention do you know why I'm happy for you because what is coming on you this night you will marvel and wonder at what begins to happen in your life everything you have seen natural believe me when i tell you you are about to experience the extraordinary dimension of the same thing and i hope you believe what i'm saying please sit down Let me give you very quickly three keys or yeah three keys and then very quickly we'll discuss how to receive the anointing and then we'll pray pay attention now in Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 let's rush Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 it says then he answered and spake unto me saying to Zerubbabel now this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel and it applies to us he said not by might nor by power human power now and strength but by my spirit saith the Lord 
there are certain results that happens by the spirit and by the power of the holy spirit micah chapter 3 and verse 8 micah chapter 3 and verse 8 micah chapter 3 and verse 8 everyone please read the first sentence will end at lord ready one to read but truly i am full of power by the spirit of the lord truly i am full of power to do ministry i am full of power to do business i am full of power for governance and politics i am full of power as a prayer warrior power as a prophet power as an apostle power as a kingdom financier truly i am full of power the anointing of the holy spirit truly i am full of power luke chapter 4 please let's just go to verse 14 for sake of time maybe 13 and 14 this was a temptation of jesus christ and the bible says and when the devil had ended all the temptation he departed from him for a season read 14 with me if you desire this ready one to read and jesus returned in the power of the spirit into galilee and there went about a fame of him through all the region round about it takes power to gain visibility you can be sincere you can have a message but it takes power for your generation to hear you many of us deal, it is this empowerment part remember i've taught you that the greatest need of an unsaved person the greatest need of an unbeliever is what salvation the greatest need of a saved believer is transformation and that's through the ministry of the spirit and the ministry of the word but the greatest need of a transformed believer is empowerment for many of us i give it to you that you have experienced a dimension of commendable transformation but you need the grace to defend the things you know. In this kingdom, we not only hear, we hear and see. Is that true? Acts chapter 8 from verse 5. Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ unto them, the Bible says. Verse 6, the Bible says, And the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing. In this kingdom, we don't hear alone. God can lift. God can bless. God can change stories. We need to see. You both hear and see. For some of you, people have only heard of what God can do through you. In this season, they will begin to see it. Very quickly. I'm not going to explain it. I'll just give it out very quickly because there's something I want us to press on. There are four keys four keys that are responsible for spiritual empowerment you want to encounter the anointing there are four keys four demands and then i will now teach you how to receive are you ready number one consecration and intimacy with god the first requirement if it is genuine power you want the power of consecration and intimacy with god first john chapter 2 please from verse 15. please hurry up hurry up first john love not the world neither the things that are in the world can you imagine that to receive the power that gives you everything you need to lose the passion for everything that is in the world love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the Father is not in him. 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Now, look at this kind of, look at this thing now. It says, love not the world. Is the word eros. Many theologians and many people have mistaken this to mean don't love prosperity, don't love increase. That's not what the Bible is teaching. The word love is the word eros. That means an ungodly affinity, an attachment towards things that takes the place of Christ in your life. 
are you getting the point now god is not against us prospering god is not against us having influence what he's against is exalting those things and having an obsession that it dethrones christ in your life any kind of money that jesus must be dethroned for you to have it is useless any kind of lifting that jesus must be dethroned for you to have it is useless anything god gives satan will try to give it to you too but the condition is bow down and worship me that was what he brought to jesus the three hebrew boys remember satan is obsessed with worship transgenerational allegiance do you know the reason why god cannot trust many people with his anointing is because they are not set apart to look beyond themselves and to see jesus lifted i think it was in lagos or so i was teaching was it yesterday now or day before yesterday and i was telling them i said you know not every closed door is demonic there are certain doors is god that closed it by himself as an act of his mercy because he has weighed you and found out that if that door is opened the, the existence of the flesh within you. There are people, no matter how they fast and pray for the prophetic, they will not receive that grace. Do you know why? Because if you actually receive the creative dimension of the prophetic in anger, you will cause and kill people because you are angry. You will kill more dead bodies. You will be cooperating with Satan because of anger. So God will rather withdraw it until that intimacy with the Holy Spirit and that transformation is there. There are many people, including preachers, there are certain anointings if God gives you today, you will not pray again. Why will you pray? When people will travel from several nations and will pay everything to come and meet the great man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. What do you need prayer for again? What do you need fasting for again? Can I tell you this? If it is the anointing you want to receive, it's more than your money. You can drop your seed and God says, nonsense, carry your money and go away. It is your heart I'm looking for. Prayer and fasting is important. But let me tell you, before your prayer and fasting will make sense and have value in the spirit, your heart condition must be right. The desire and the desperation to see Jesus revealed and glorified in your life. Do you know, you always hear me give this example imagine that god opens your eyes to the prophetic and a millionaire or a billionaire billionaires are all over your church or your ministry you literally can look at them and god opens your eyes and you see what they have in their account you've already bought sharp sand to build your house and you are limited there's there's no money you've calculated everything your engineer has told you 300 million will build a solid structure for you and the people trust you that's when you will know whether you are saved or not because one spectacular prophetic word and you see human beings when they trust you they become vulnerable to you sincerely you can tell someone look you have one billion two hundred and fifty thousand ah yes that's true oh yeah the other part i won't touch the one billion but that other slice give on to caesar what you, know, you can twist anything and just because you are talking and the person is falling while you are talking does not mean it is god that is behind it you see i told you that you can misuse the anointing there is a level of charismatism that the anointing brings there is an aura it's a fragrance it can attract everything to you that is the reason why people have to be dead to self are we together consecration and intimacy proverbs 23 and verse 26 this has become an anthem in my life and i'm praying that someone will finally get that revelation please look up my son give me mine give me thine many people are giving god offerings many people are giving god pulpit god does not want your pulpit He's not looking for your offering, your tithe. All of those things are secondary. Let me tell you sincerely, if you want power with God, Koinonia, hear me. What God wants is your heart. I can tell you by the authority of scripture, by the privilege of learning from the fathers, 
and by my own experience if you are genuinely anointed genuinely anointed of God there is almost a godlike worship that people can bring around you because of the all surpassing manifestation of the excellency of God in your life even you sometimes you will look at yourself and say my God who am I I know what the anointing can do believe me and if you are not broken before God and especially our generation of ministers small grace here small anointing and that's it you see people misbehaving all around with the anointing small prophetic small apostolic and all kinds of things and God just withdraws the more he wants to give you because when God tests you with it you are rude you are lawless you are indisciplined you are you are you are rebellious you don't have any regard for authority God says no this little we've given this guy let's leave it there if we multiply this anointing you will kill everybody it means people will start kneeling down lick your shoe worship you call you king of kings then they will receive healing and go another person will do that kind of thing go and read the stories of people I'm not being sarcastic who did not allow God to walk on their hearts preachers let me encourage you co-laborers in the gospel let's be careful how we impart graces on people just because people are committed and their hearts are open does not mean they are prepared let God vet them so that you do not anoint people who will be a casualty to you and others history has taught us a lesson anointing people unprepared will always lead to casualty we are all students in the school of the spirit don't get me wrong it's like carrying your car and giving your 12 or 13 year old child the way children are brilliant now one can even drive with his eyes closed children are have mastered the art of surprising everybody but the chances are excellent that that child he will most likely be the only one with that car among his contemporaries and his pride not incompetence that will kill that child do you know what it means to carry the grace that grants you access to the destinies the loyalty the finances of people it was a father in the Lord Baba Adeboye who made a statement one time and he said by the grace of God if he needs a shirt today by the privilege of the influence God has given him he can make one statement and say brethren I need a shirt and he said literally without exaggeration his size can finish in the market because everyone will want to go and do you know what it means to have that level of influence don't tell me I will be fine are you seeing why God works on our hearts you can speak to someone and say in the name of Jesus Christ may the Lord lift you and in two weeks he comes back he has become a billionaire and the person comes to you as a billionaire and say man of God I'm still your boy oh good news to the ear of a preacher a billionaire is your boy are you learning tonight while you are laughing please make sure you understand what I'm saying God demands death to the flesh if you must carry genuine power billionaire is your boy and can say sir it looks like you are not happy is there any problem what can I do for you and Satan comes to stand by you and says is this how you are going to allow remember your childhood remember how you suffered now is your chance and yet the Spirit of God tells you do not touch one naira from that man rather sow into his life and bless him and you say I reject that spirit that that the spirit that is not an economist to use your brain and know that this will flow from I mean Can you be so anointed that God places you in the midst of greatness and you still have self-control? There are many wealthy people today who run away from churches, respectfully speaking, because they won't let them rest. Once the preacher is preaching, he's looking at everybody, but they know who he's talking to. And the people say, please, it's not a cause to be blessed. That's why most people don't testify. Because they know it's a risk. Oh, this is what God has done. We just floated two aircraft, I mean, one estate and all of that. And the preacher is clapping. And the man knows exactly what that clap means. 
see i i made a vow and a covenant that by the privilege of god's grace i'm not saying it by the strength of the flesh this ministry will never inconvenience anybody because of tea and bread if god will not provide the wisdom to fund this assignment i will honorably go back home and sit down it's better to sit down and not do ministry but have your integrity are we together now consecration and intimacy with God number two what is the second key that governs the manifestation of the anointing in your life honor to the Word of God if you do not live by the principles of the kingdom honor to the Word of God if you do not live by the principles of the kingdom you will never access the anointing please write it very quickly honor to the Word of God in Proverbs 23 verse 22 the b part where we just read he said my son give me thine heart proverbs 23 26 it says and let your ears your eyes observe my ways john chapter 1 and verse 3 john chapter 1 and verse 3 he says and without him the word all things were made by the word and without him the word was not anything made that was made are we together even the power of God hides in his word Habakkuk chapter 3 it's become an anthem here to Habakkuk chapter 3 we'll start from verse 3 and 4 God came from Taman and the Holy One from Mount Paran his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise verse 4 I wish we could have verse 4 in Amplified, otherwise no problem. It says, and his brightness was as the light. It says, rays streamed from his hand, and there in that sun-like splendor was the hiding place of his power. There is a relationship between the word of God and the power of God. The second key is honor to the word of God. I submit to you that I have a problem with people who manifest power and I cannot see in their lives honor for the word of God and the principles of the kingdom. If you manifest power and you do not have honor for the word of God, you deserve to be suspected. Are we together? Because it's like seeing somebody with a child who you never saw pregnancy. Are we together? Your stomach was as flat as my own now and then immediately you just drag a child no we have a right to say whose child is this and it's not maybe surrogacy or anything you say it's my child i was pregnant we need to examine that kind of pregnancy that's how the word is and miracles on the supernatural if you do not have honor to the word of god we look at your life and we do not see that you understand the word of god believe me do not blame people if they suspect the manifestations that come through your life the word of God gives credence to the outworkings of his power in your life are we together number three what is the third key that controls spiritual empowerment prayer with fasting for me it's not just prayer and fasting it is prayer with fasting the emphasis is prayer the fasting is an accelerator prayer with fasting Luke chapter 4 very quickly we'll look at verse 1 and 2 then we'll go to 14 and 15 Luke chapter 2 Luke chapter 4 1 and 2 the Bible talks about Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost so he was full of the Holy Ghost he returned from Jordan and he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness verse 2 it says being 40 days tempted of the devil and the Bible says in those days he did eat nothing and when they were ended he was afterwards hungry let's jump for the sake of time to verse 14 you know his temptation the three temptations and all of that and the bible says jesus returned in the power of the spirit into galilee and there went about a fame all the regions round about 15. it says and he taught in their synagogues being glorified of all if you want to walk in genuine spiritual power the facilitator of the anointing is prayer with fasting 
there is nobody I know who genuinely commands the supernatural who is not a student of prayer with fasting there are wrong fasts there are religious prayers and fasting that does not carry any power it's just a show of religiosity with no it's just for health benefits but there is the kind of fast God has commanded and then according to James chapter 5 there is the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man that avails much it, it has tremendous power dynamic in its working amplified says hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you